globe at this year's Buddha Day ceremony symbolizes the importance of the theme of environmental protection. An earthquake victim from 10 years ago can now sustain herself while giving back to others in need. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. The annual Buddha Day ceremony in Taipei was hosted at Chiang kai shek Memorial Hall at the night of May 13th. About 20,000 people, including government officials and civilian organizations, gathered to attend the ceremony. Everyone prayed sincerely with the lotus lamps in their hands, showing the beauty of the solemn Buddhist spirit. Dharma masters from different Buddhist branches walk into the venue slowly, kicking off the Buddha Day ceremony. About 20,000 people, including international ambassadors, central government officials, police officers, as well as firefighters, gather in Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. There are also new immigrant representatives wearing their traditional costumes to participate in the annual event. 600 representatives and young volunteers interpret the musical drum performance and the performing members including diverse religions and ethnicities, showing the beauty of harmony. President Tsai Ing-wen joined hands with Dharma masters to lead everyone to chant Buddhist sutras. The largest Buddha Day ceremony took place on the night of May 13th. Considering the global climate change, which has caused countless natural disasters, this year the theme focuses on environmental protection while expressing the wish for peace and auspiciousness. This year, of the 20,000 people here only have one wish, that is to pray for peace and auspiciousness. And it can only come true when we all love and protect our Earth. The Buddha Day ceremony is the time of the year to clean the dust in our hearts. With the splendid lotus lamps and the stolen Buddhist chanting, everyone gathers their will to spread more goodness in the society for their coming future. This year, one of the highlights of the Buddha Day ceremony in Taipei was the three-dimension globe created with 2,240 PET bottles. This special globe symbolizes that everyone should take action to practice environmental protection in daily life. Under the three-dimensional globe, this family of four is busy testing the hardware equipment under the sun. Prior to the Buddha Day ceremony, they have to write the programming language, control the LED lights, and ensure that the melody can be played normally at the ceremony. Beneath the earth in the universe, there should be some clouds, so we use fog to replace the clouds. Since electric appliances are mostly not water-resistant, today we want to strengthen their waterproof function. The 3D globe was created by all the volunteers from Taipei's Neihu district. They work day and night to make it with 2,240 PET bottles. The bottles differing in colors of green, white, and blue represents different meanings. The green PET bottles symbolize five continents, white represents North and South Pole, and blue is the color of the ocean. To make the earth free of calamities, it requires everyone to carry out environmental protection in their daily life. This is our initial concept at the time. At night, the 3D globe turns on the LED lights with three different colors, becoming one of the highlights of this year's Buddha Day ceremony. Participants of this grand event hope that they can not only cleanse their minds and souls, but also remind themselves to take action to protect planet Earth. The theme of this year's Buddha Day ceremony is peace and auspiciousness. Hence, all the participants wore blue, white, or green clothes in order to form the symbolic formations of prayer and harmony. Nonetheless, only when we've protected our Earth, all human beings can have real peace. Let's join them there. <laughs> On the solemn Buddha Day ceremony, everyone prays with a united heart sincerely for a peaceful world. Participants have also formed the symbolic formations of peace and auspiciousness. When people face the impermanence in life, the only happiness in hearts is to stay in peace. That's why we thought of the formation that symbolizes peace and auspiciousness, because it's what many people are praying for. So we have a formation of prayer to pray for peace and auspiciousness. Only when we've protected the mountains and streams and love the earth can all mankind live in peace. Therefore, about 10,000 people surround the recyclable earth in the center to symbolize the belief of protecting the environment.
The second formation, we have people wearing the green recyclable clothes to form a formation that symbolizes the mother that guards the land, and everyone has a straw in their hand, meaning everyone should love the earth. The outer circle symbolizes the steadfast steps we take to love and protect our earth together. The Buddha Day ceremony is not only a time to pray, most importantly, it is a reminder to practice our love for the Mother Earth in our daily life. After the Buddha Day ceremony ended, Cici volunteers work as a team to clean up the event venue. They've also asked the public to help to take off the ground markers, returning the plaza to its original state. It takes a simple gesture to return the environment to its original clean state. This is very good. It takes a simple gesture for us to help out, as everyone is busy. The work is completed sooner if everyone does it together. The environment will become cleaner this way. The volunteer is collecting the ground markers with a garbage bag. In just a few minutes, the ground has become much cleaner. I prepared a bag for everyone to place the ground markers they'd taken off the ground. It's a good idea to collect and give them to the recycling company. The challenge begins after the ceremony ends. The disassembly and storage of Buddha statue altars and water and electricity appliances rely on experienced volunteers. After doing this for several times, people know the tricks. In the beginning, we're still putting things away by midnight or 1 or 2 p.m. The volunteers persevere with the work, drawing a perfect ending to the Buddha Day ceremony. Now turning our camera to the Buddha's birth in Nepal. The B Buddha Day ceremony hails people's heart in different countries in the world. In 2015, a massive earthquake occurred in Nepal. Sushi volunteers carried out disaster relief work while hosted the first Buddha Day ceremony. Another country, Ecuador, also received the Buddha's blessing after the disaster in 2016. Here is our report. Bringing the Buddhist teachings back to the Buddha's homeland, this moment is unforgettable and uneasy for the participating Tsuji volunteers. Going back to the time before the ceremony, volunteers need to host the first aid distribution in Nepal as well as the first Buddha Day ceremony at the same time. It's a breakthrough but also a challenge. Today is special because we have the Buddha Day ceremony, so there are many challenges. Even if we have meetings in advance, it won't help us much because we must judge what to do on the spot. There's almost nothing here, therefore volunteers must make the banners and decorate the stage by themselves. They also didn't skip the rehearsal before the ceremony. The situation may be chaotic, but the 35 disaster relief team members still work together with united hearts to spread the peaceful blessings at the plaza. About 200 monks from local Buddhist temples also participate in the event. You are standing with all the victims. You are standing, you are empathizing with the victims and doing everything, whatever you can. In 2016, Eduardo also suffered from massive earthquake and city volunteers put in efforts to help disaster relief works. On the day of the closing ceremony, many Catholic believers in the present also come to share the Buddhist blessings. On the closing ceremony, we thought that although they are not Buddhist disciples, but the great love from the Master transcends religions. Therefore, we thought that if they can have a chance to purify their hearts on the last day, I believe it will be a perfect ending. 
The next year, Ecuador suffered from a flood, and Suji once again conducted disaster relief works. The connection of love was presented in the Catholic Church. This is also the first Buddha Day ceremony Suji hosted in 2017. To me, it's a very fulfilling working day. Although they have different religions with me, it's a very simple but deep experience. During the prayer, many people come in here for fellowship or seeking peace of mind. Water is a symbol to purify minds. Buddha has won our sincere respect because it teaches us to become a better person. This is an amazing moment. A girl helped me to hold my baby so he can touch the water. This had made me understand that there are people to give you a hand when you're helpless, and I thought it's wonderful. I've realized that helping each other is part of this ritual. This is my happiest day. I cried and I shed tears while I told these people how thankful I am to them. This is our first time to feel this way. Our town has never had this kind of ambience before. There are only 10% Buddhist populations in Nepal and 80% of Ecuador people are Catholics. However, they now know that they can once again find peace in their hearts because they found the most sincere love. Suji volunteers launched a mid to long term reconstruction project to rebuild homes after an earthquake took place in Wenchuan County, Sichuan, 10 years ago. One of the care recipients was 12 year old Diao Chunyan, who suffered from congenital hip dislocation, which prevented her from walking to school. Because of Suji's help, she had a surgery, and now she has a job and even contributes to Suji each month. I just want my family to be safe. If I am the one to die, then take me. Our house had no chance. It totally collapsed, and there was no way to go in. For these disaster victims, it's very important to take care of their emotions, food, lodging, and health care. Let's pray for him, okay? How are you? Is your father good? In the disaster area, volunteers show great concern for the children. This is the case for Dao Chunyan, who is 12 years old and has congenital hip dislocation, making it impossible for her to walk to school. It's about one kilometer away. I can't walk that far as my thigh begins to hurt. From a poor family, which was also affected by the earthquake, her father wanted her to have a surgery, but was unable to afford it. This led Zuji volunteers to decide to help her visit Chengdu for a procedure. My dream is to become a doctor. I want to help others by performing surgery. The reporter visited the hospital in 2010 to check on her condition and found that this young girl drew many pictures to express her thanks for the surgery. After 10 years, she is now 22, has a stable job where she's the boss's top assistant. She's more lively and positive and gives off a good energy. Back in the field, she is also a diligent worker and a great help to her mother. I would like to thank Ziji for helping Diao Chunyan get medical care. Now she can help me manage our household affairs. Now when I walk, it doesn't hurt. I can help relieve some of the economic pressure on my parents, and I'm feeling quite good now. While she couldn't become a medical doctor, she did keep her promise of helping people. A few U.S. dollars isn't that much for me every month. It is like my pocket money. This is the bamboo coin bank given to her by a volunteer long ago, which is her biggest blessing.
After the 2008 Nargis disaster, Myanmar City volunteers helped survivors to seek medical assistance. More than 6,000 free cataract surgeries were performed, improving many people's eyesight. Tanlian Tharparwa Meditation Center is one of the focus areas for Tima members due to its large intake of impoverished individuals, which is about a total of 15,000 people. Tima conducts monthly free clinic at the center. According to legend, a businessman from Yangon, Myanmar, who was present during the famine in India 2,500 years ago, brought food for the Buddha. In return, he had asked for eight strands of Buddha's hair and then constructed a tower for worship. It's now known as the Swadangam Pangoda in Yangon. In Myanmar, 90% of the population are Theravada Buddhists. Daily meditation is a huge part of Theravada Buddhism because through this practice, its followers can gain inner peace. The Lang Tabawa Meditation Center has around 35.6 hectares of land, with more than 17 buildings and a beautiful view of nature. The only thing different than other monasteries is the overwhelming poverty-stricken and ill population of people that they take in voluntarily. individuals just have a small area that they call home. But this type of shelter situation cannot withstand any harsh environmental tolls. When the heavy rain season hits, everything in the thatched cottages is covered in mud, forcing the individuals to always be on fight or flight mode. Because most, sometimes, most, sometimes they stay here. Okay. Because of the rainy season, they move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then every day they stay. The able individuals can get away during the raining seasons, but the ones who are bedridden and too sick to move aren't as lucky. They are stuck there, no matter what. No more freedom. Do you see my tears? I am begging you to stop your footsteps and spend some time with me. The feeling of slowly dying is horrifying to me. Even though the teachings through meditation and karma lets us know that this is just a part of life, but we are still scared to die alone with whatever illnesses we have. The large shelter area inside the center consists of both food and makeshift toilet barrels. There is an average temperature of 40 degrees Celsius during the dry season, and the overwhelming odor accumulated by human excrement makes it hard to breathe. The shelter looks more like a hospice center, but without any medical equipment. You can see the suffering and fear in every corner. This is the place where the majority of people take their last breath on this earth. This is why it's so crucial for the TIMA members to visit this shelter on a regular basis. A hole the size of a fist on the side of his chest must be filled with gauze that is nearly 360 centimeters long. He grinds his teeth and doesn't make a sound throughout the whole process. He's just grateful that there is any medical attention. The hole goes straight to his lungs due to not being able to afford hospital fees when he was infected with TB and has severe pneumonia. He cheated death and is now kept alive by the Tima team. Tsuji <laughs> Foundation is very different than other organizations because they always do long-term planning. The TIMA members will do same-day free clinics and then also follow up with in-depth home visits with each patient. Yeah, you remember me? Yeah. Don't want to let go because no idea if there will be a next time. It's hard to believe that there are a whole group of people here that have been forgotten by society. It's very hard to evaluate the medical system in every country. But from a professional point of view, there are so many things that can't be improved. They deserve to be treated fairly and with dignity. The center takes in individuals who have illnesses, such as AIDS and TB. Since there's no triage section, even for free clinics, all of the volunteers need to be very cautious when they come into contact with each individual. 
they rely on the medical person too much. Uh, so we must uh, uh, train their mind to be uh, self, uh, self confident, mm, to take care of themselves and to make their environment clean. To do good deeds freely, in the right way, without grasping. To be able to do like this, I have to learn everywhere in this country and also in abroad. I also learned Suchi Foundation. <laughs> in Myanmar, there are nearly 90 plus individuals who fall deadly ill every month. They're all sent here to the center where there is a bed and free medical attention. Even with that, death is always knocking at their doors. We cannot deny the vicious cycle of poverty in all aspects of life. So take a good look at ourselves. Maybe you will start to appreciate what you have and realize that we are truly blessed. Liu Huilin, the head nurse of Taichung Cixi Hospital, has engaged in nursing for 13 years. In her colleagues' eyes, she is very demanding to her colleagues as well as to herself. She hopes to be a competent nurse so that every patient can receive the highest quality health care. Her spirit maintains in my body. I am very thankful to her as she led us mindfully. On her way to get into nursing, there was a person who influenced her most profoundly. I always feel like that someday she will come back to stay with us. Head nurse Li Hua, who led Liu that year, died of lung cancer in less than two years. When she lay dying, I told her that I would try my best to be a competent nurse. Working under a high-pressure environment, Miss Liu never slacked off in her nursing work. If we don't follow principles, we will make wrong decisions easily. I am a very serious person, so if I don't smile, I often scare many people. We should come very often to check the patients and their family. Three years ago, Liu was transferred to Taizong City Hospital because of her demanding personality. She has been working hard to negotiate with her colleagues. I didn't know much about nursing. Later, I realized why she was quite demanding. It's because she hoped that we can be responsible for our duties. Liu always shows her tenderness to patients as she believes that smile is the best therapy. Miss Liu treats patients as her own family because she once feels helpless when her mother suffered from cervical cancer. Back then, I didn't know how painful my mother felt when she was hospitalized due to illness. Her heart also went out for us. During the process, I felt like I was going to lose my mom soon. I am still learning. I am still working hard to be a competent nurse. Cixi volunteers in Harbin, China, perform sign languages and tea ceremony at the local hospital on Mother's Day for the seniors to enjoy the companionship of family. We will leave you with these images and thank you for joining us.